have been considered or called extra? Raise your hands. All right. <laughs> and how many of you have been told that sometimes you just do too much? Yeah. So I got some overachievers in the room, okay? I'm liking it. Now, if you've never been accused of trying to make other people look bad or been considered a show off, buckle up and get ready to hear things from the lens of an overachiever. Now, if you're like me, then you're all too familiar with those phrases, then you're, yes. And you know that it's your personal desire to always put forth your best effort, even when it comes to parenting. Now, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share a bit of my story. But more importantly, before I leave this beautiful red dot, I'm going to introduce you to the quiet method to avoid some parenting pain points that are oftentimes associated with guilt. Now, before my BC life, you know, before COVID, I was just like so many other parents strategically focused on living out my dreams and not overly engaged with my children's academics. I thought chaperoning at least one field trip per kid per year and helping with homework, family vacations, and making sure we had open dialogue was really doing something. That was important to me, but it also <laughs> was hard because I was always doing so many other things. As a home small business owner, founder of an international nonprofit, a global speaker, and an award-winning radio show host, best-selling author, sought-after producer. Yeah, you guys are probably like, yeah, you do be doing too much, right? <laughs> but to me, my life was seemingly all together. Now, if you fast forward a few years and stop at the year that everyone thought was going to bring forth vision and insight, you'll see. I was blindsided just like so many others. You see, I kicked off 2020 as a single parent of two. But let me tell you, I was so excited about that year. That was until I got a call from my kid's school telling me that I was going to be a virtual teacher. Did anybody else get that call? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all I could do in that moment was be quiet and listen. Now, I don't personally know any parent that was excited about that new title that they received. I mean, I wasn't. Maybe y'all were, or you might know somebody who was. But as for me, I was the furthest thing from enthused. You see, who would be excited about running a business and homeschooling a six and seven-year-old simultaneously from the same space? Yeah, wasn't me. And when I took on the role, I knew what was going to happen. My days became long and my nights became pretty much non-existent. I went from my evenings becoming a tug of war between my pillow and productivity, but somehow I still managed to make it through. <sighs> well, that was until my clients couldn't pay their retainers. My prospects dried up just like my bank account. And let's just say that sent my overachiever nature into a panic. That overly excited angel lost patience and became frustrated with the kids, grew fearful of everything that I had built collapsing. And yet this impending fear of failing is what kept me going. Now I'd be lying if I stood here and said that I did not feel like I had failed my children at some point, but if your lives looked anything like mine, I know that you also had times where you felt like, I wish I could just travel the world or just go back to the office. <laughs> but instead, we sat in isolation and kept quiet. It's ironic because quiet is a state that I had grown quite familiar with, which I'll get into that a little bit later, but what I will tell you is this. What I learned during that time is what prompted a shift in my overachiever and possibly even controlling nature. <laughs> it's what I learned during that time that I shared with others across the world, whether I was in Accra, Ghana, Toronto, Canada, Nassau, Bahamas, or anywhere else that I would speak and be posed with the question, how do you travel all over the world and pursue your dreams and not feel guilty about leaving your children? And it's funny because it wasn't necessarily an emotion that I had always felt. But I'm going to tell you that story a little bit later, so hold tight. But I want to introduce you to the quiet method. You see, it's made up of five simple words that if adhered to can help the overachieving parent or the go-getter nine-to-fiver overcome some of the guilts that are often associated with 
the things that society places on us as we relate to expectations. Sometimes we even put that on it ourselves. Now, the quiet method can also be looked at as a checklist to help you navigate your way through difficult moments of conflict or even conviction. So it starts with Q, quality over quantity. Pretty much speaks for itself, so don't worry so much about how often you're spending, spending time with your kids because it's really how you're spending the time that matters. For me, I established early on a regular bedtime ritual with my kids. I'd sing, yes, Jesus loves me. <laughs> and from that, my kids would take turns praying. And after that, we'd all say goodnight. You see, no matter where I am in the world, that's something that we can always do and that's a time that we can always share. You is understanding. You can approach understanding from a few different ways, but most importantly, it's granting yourself grace. As parents, we don't always do everything perfect or right, but it's giving ourselves permission to make mistakes and forgive ourselves. Now, the second component too is, is having a keen listening ear. I can remember a time that I was sitting in the car, I'd pick my kids up from their dads, and my little son, he had an attitude. I looked in the rearview mirror, I'm like, yo, Nellie, what's going on? He's like, mommy, why weren't you at my last important t-ball game of the season? I was stuck because one, I had no idea that I'd missed the t-ball game. And secondly, I had no idea it was the last one of the season. But instead of making an excuse, I listened to him. I apologized and I figured out a path forward. Did I feel bad? Absolutely. But that's where grace kicks in. I is intentional. You want to be intentional with your time. Ask you guys a question. How many hours are there in a day? Go ahead, don't be shy, shout it out. I know y'all know. 24. See, boom. Everybody has the answer to it, but yet oftentimes people are like, oh my gosh, I don't know what happened to the time in my day. I didn't get anything accomplished that I thought I wanted to, but if you had an important business meeting, I bet you wouldn't miss that meeting. Or if you wanted to get your hair done, you would schedule it on your calendar. So the same way that you have that intention around the things that are important to you, you want to make sure that you give your, same ki your kids the same level of attention because you never want them to feel like they're an option because they should always be your priority. E is expressive. Effective communication is essential. It's important to establish a safe place for your children to express how they're feeling. Let me go back to the story I told. If I would have flipped out when my kid told me, oh, mommy, you missed my t-ball game, then I could have halted the conversation and the ability of him to want to share with me moving forward. I could have completely shut it down. So it's important to always operate from a space of listening and having an understanding ear and responding with love. T, transparent. A lot of parents shelter their children from harsh realities. However, when we're able to be honest about life, death, finances, and everything in between, I believe it helps build the emotional intelligence of our kids. After my cousin died of COVID last year, I was apprehensive about sharing the news with my kids. One, because I didn't want to scare them even more than they already were about COVID. But when I decided to, I was quite surprised because they were so empathetic and engaged in what happened. And the lesson in that was that children are a lot more resilient than we often give them credit for. Now, these five elements have been a constant reminder for me to operate from a space of resilience and sometimes knowing that it's all right to be quiet, to sit in reflection and extract the beauty from difficult situations, because that's exactly how the quiet method was created. Remember the story I said I would come back to? All right, well, before I was able to successfully bring my son Noah into the world, I hit a valley moment. You know, a valley moment is one of those times where you don't quite know how you're gonna make it through a particular situation, but you keep pushing forward anyways. I was in a deep valley. I spent a few years learning how to grow quiet and to be still, to tap, and to trust in my faith. And if you guys have ever had a valley moment, I know you guys understand. 
You see, before I was able to successfully bring my two healthy boys into this world, Noah and Nelson, I'd actually lost five kids. So during that time, that's when the quiet method was birthed. I believe I had to go through a rebirth of myself to be able to give of myself in a way that a mother needed to give to her children. I realized that my journey to my boys was my appreciation that I needed to understand and love them the way that they needed to be loved. You see, the pandemic stripped me of a lot, but it replenished me in lessons I could have never learned otherwise. For instance, I now know that my kids have a, their bellies are equivalent to a bottomless pit, <laughs> but I also know where they shine academically in areas that still need improvement. Being tagged for an unpaid role when money was scarce and time was limited was a humbling experience to say the least. But the quiet method helped add perspective during moments of solace and patience when battling fear. As we move closer to life after COVID, I know that the quiet method will still hold its value because most of us would choose quality over quantity for things that really matter. And everyone wants and deserves to be understood. And who would not want to be intentionally prioritized? Like, I don't personally know anybody who's like, yo, I just want to be an option. At least not an overachiever, right? So when it comes to sharing how we feel, a space that allows us to express ourselves more openly and honestly, that's something we all look for. And you know what I found comfort in? It's transparency. Like I would take a straight shooter any day because I know that that's somebody that I can trust. So whether you're a parent or someone who's focused on being your best self, the quiet method lays the foundation for relational success, not just ways for you to parent without the guilt. So jot it down, snap a pic. <laughs> but know this. I want you to take this one lesson. And it comes from Isaiah 7, 4. Take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint-hearted. And for all my overachievers in the room, it's okay to be extra and maybe even a bit much, but it's definitely okay to be quiet. Thank you. <laughs>